Across the land, JoePags.com. All the social media is there. And, of course, uh, Newsmax TV as well. It's the Joe Pag Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have back the former press secretary for the Donald Trump White House. It is Sean Spicer. He's also an author of a, of a book that's flying off the shelf. Sean, how are you? I'm good, Joe. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, really glad to have you back, my man. I wanted everybody to go and get this book. It's called The Briefing, Politics, the Press, and the President. And last time I had John, man, we had a great reaction, and, and I appreciate you taking the I know that you're, you're traveling around, and you're in an airport, and you're doing all sorts of stuff, so I appreciate you squeezing us in. Well, I know how important your, your audience is, a loyal bunch of folks that uh, like to stay informed, and so I, there's nowhere I'd rather be than with you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, my man. All right, so... I have to go here. I know that you've been watching this, and, and everybody who's on Twitter sees this, and I know that you read a lot and you keep yourself very informed. Um, Sarah Sanders, who uh, who succeeded you in the job, uh, has been, uh, I think, even treated worse than you were, and I think you were treated pretty badly. And, and for some reason, it's okay to follow her and her family into restaurants and, and boo her down and call her a liar. She's the first press secretary that has Secret Service now agents following her and her family. Um, any comment on how she's been treated uh, now that you're out of the job? Uh, and I know that you weren't treated right at all, but but do you, did you see it ramp up even after you left? Yeah, to some degree I did. I mean, look, I, I write in the book several issues that I had or the things that happened to me, but there's no question about it that Sarah's treatment and clearly the threats have exceeded anything that I felt. They don't give you a Secret Service detail for fun. Yeah. These are you know officer, uh, trained agents who – you know, spend a lifetime making sure that senior government officials are protected in the, in the executive office of the president. So they didn't do this because it just it was something you know good to do. They gave it to her because of the threat. And the thing that I find fascinating about your question is that there has been little, if any, concern exhibited by. I mean, they're not. The, the, you know, the, the, it is the media treatment of her that generally drives this. Yeah. So it's interesting how often it's all about them, um, and it's a very one-sided discussion. Look, I don't think that there should ever. No no one should should have violence or intimidation used against them for expressing themselves. Right. She is a government service. I, I don't believe folks in the media. I don't want to see any of them, um, whether you're on the far left of the media or not. Yeah. I don't think anyone should be threatened for expressing themselves. What makes our country people who don't agree with them because they cherish the First Amendment? Right. But the idea that, that we are now seeing this, and, and again, I talk about in the book the instances that happened to me, but it pales in comparison to what happened to Sarah. And watching these guys, not once has I, have I seen any of them sort of do that story about how, you know, this is a first and, and it's a, it's sad to see this happen. They don't politics, the press and the president. I mean, at first it looked like it was sort of tongue in cheek and kind of fun when when April Ryan accused um, Sarah Sanders of not baking a pie that she brought in or said that she baked. I mean, I thought, OK, they're just kidding around. But it turns out she really wanted her to prove that she baked the pie. I mean, it's so contentious and so – like Sam and Donaldson – and, and, But it's also petty, right? right? I mean, that the idea that, that Sarah would lie about baking – I mean, that's just – I know that uh, – the idea that, Joe, that we are even talking about this right. is ridiculous. No, no but it is. it's true. The idea that right now the press is basically trying to say – like, think about that. And, and they, none of them – none of them – here's the problem, and I talk about this over and over in the book. Here's my biggest issue. None of them will call each other out, right? So in any other industry, if there was another talk show host – um, that was saying or doing things that you thought, you know what, look, I, I have great dialogue, I'm respectful on my show, right. and look at what this guy's doing. You'd call it out and say, that person doesn't represent the profession that I love. Right. These guys, when they act like they do, none of them call each other out. I saw one piece in The Atlantic the other day, which is just mind-blowing. Yeah. Uh, I must have missed the copy editors that called out <laughs> Jim Acosta and said that his behavior and his antics are bad for the industry. And yeah. I, I'm finally, I got a sad... I can't believe I'm giving the Atlantic of all uh, right. of all of yeah. all you know outlets any kind of credit, but it was it was also a, an opinion piece, so yeah. it's not like it was them. But but this idea that it's always about them and that they don't call out any of these bad antics or behavior or lines of questioning and say that's really not appropriate for what we as journalists stand for is is sad to me. It's almost like they don't get the relationship. It's Sean Spicer, The Briefing, Politics, The Press, and The President. That's his book. Go and get it. It's flying off the shelves. Something has changed, and I brought up Sam Donaldson a second ago. He used to be the guy that would really be sort of a a stickler when it came to Ronald Reagan. They would go back and forth, but by the end of it, they would sort of chuckle it off, and, and Sam would do his reporting, and the president would continue being the president. Um, later, when I interviewed Sam Donaldson, he said the relationship actually got much better because he got what I was trying to do. He did 
did it with with class. He did it with some some humor. Today, Acosta really does want it to be about him. April well, Ryan wants it to be about her. He's they, making he's making all the rounds in the late night shows. Right. It's a, exactly. He's trying to to make his antics about the First Amendment and about the freedom of the press, which it's not. It's getting up. Look, no one's the difference between Donaldson and Acosta is that frankly, at the end of the day, Sam Donaldson was also known for getting stories and Absolutely. for breaking news. Acosta name the last time that Jim Acosta has actually broken any piece of news or headlined a story. It doesn't happen. It doesn't. The, the reason you know Jim Acosta is because he waves his hands and he yells loud and he makes a scene that's it so you know if you want to if 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 that is your standard for what a good journalist is now then well then there he is but i don't think that that was what i always was growing up thinking what uh, someone who goes into journalism is all about right Uh, the name of the book is the briefing politics the press and the president this is sean spicer i was a journalist for many many years i i remember for 14 or 15 years as a tv news anchor and and a reporter um and, and having won many awards I never once did a story about me. Never once <laughs> was I, I mean the only thing I would say about me was my name at the end when I tossed it back or or my name in the beginning when I when I introduced the the, the program the program that I was on. I don't get if he's trying to be a star, he's trying to become an actor, he wants to be a singer like Joe Scarborough. I don't under, I don't I'm not sure I understand I, what I it think, is that I he's did, getting to at. To me this is an audition. Like, it really? Here's the thing, Joe. Joe, you just mentioned it. If you're part of the reason I left the job, and I write about this very, you know, at length in the book, is that as a press secretary, you're never supposed to be the story. Yeah. And I write very, you know, clearly that over time, I too often became the story. My solution was to step down and say to the president, "Look, you need a clean slate. I, I can't. I have, unfortunately, for a lot of reasons, not. But to your point." The journalist should not be the story, right? right? And, and and unfortunately, it's now all about him in particular. And some of these other ones are, are not too far behind either. And, and by the way, he loves that we're talking about him, but but I've got to talk to, to talk about him because I think that the American public are starting to get who he is, and he is exactly who you're describing him to be. The name of the book is The Briefing, Politics, The Press, and The President. Go and get it. So let's talk specifically about that, that event. The president has said consistently, fake news is the enemy of the people. Fake news is, is a problem. We've got to correct it. Fake news is is trying to direct the narrative. So for some reason, um, he he does another tweet storm, a Twitter storm over the weekend or something. Sarah Sanders now has to answer to Acosta going right at her demanding now. I demand you say that the news media is not the enemy of the people or are not the enemy of the people. And, and he's really put, you, you have to say it. Well, Sarah, you just said all that. You still didn't say that we're not the enemy of the people. I deserve better. We deserve better. We, we should be respected. And she goes down a, a litany, a list of how she's been treated and the horrible things that were done at the correspondence dinner and when she tried to have some food with her family. And Acosta, oh, I'm really sorry that happened. But you still didn't tell me that I'm not great. So what is he trying to elicit? He's not going to get her to say those words. Does he think that he's showing himself to be a victim to the people? And should she should she have just walked in? Sean, can, can you as the press secretary just turn around and walk away? Because at some point, I just want her just to walk away from this guy. Look, I think that's what he wants, though. And again, part of this is, to your question, he wants to be the story. So he wants to immediately go on air and, again, not report about issues and and – uh, policies that are affecting the American people, but yeah. he wants to go on and report about him and say, when I questioned Sarah Sanders about me, here's what she said or didn't say about me. Yeah. So he, you know, I, again, this is the most fascinating thing that you've got this, you know, so called reporter who has made himself the entire story. And everything now is consuming about how you know whether how he's being treated, how he's being respected. What it's not about the issues. It's not about the policies. It's not about the issues. Not on us. <laughs> imagine, imagine they actually reported stuff. That'd be weird. The briefing, politics, the press, and the president. His name is Sean Spicer. Sean, this interview really is about you, uh, uh, even <laughs> though we've talked mostly about Jim Acosta, which he'll be happy about. Uh, but but I've got to ask you, and I didn't ask you this the first time I interviewed you. Um, if you had the opportunity, would you go back and do it again and do it differently, or would you not do it to begin with? I would go back and do it differently. I think obviously I've learned a lot uh, during you know during my time, but uh, you know no, there's a difference. Just to be clear, uh, would I if I went back in time, would I do it again? Uh, yes, I thought it was an honor to to a privilege to serve the country. Right. Uh, would I go back now and do it again for a second time? Absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. So, in other words, if he, so if he called you right now and said, come back, you'd say, I'm good. 
I'd say, Mr. President, you know how this is going to end. <laughs> we, we already went through this. Thank you. I'd love to help you in a lot of other ways and serve this country, but I don't think this is the best. I want to I want to throw you a curveball, and if you don't have an opinion because you because you don't know much about it, that, that's fine. But but this, this Omarosa has has written a book now, and I guess she is telling people allegedly uh, that she secretly recorded the president. Any thoughts on that? I mean, the, people like yeah, Michael Cohen I, I, and I'm I, I, I got to tell you, I, I am utterly disgusted. Yeah. Um, I, I think that on so many levels, it is delusional and it is disloyal and it is disgusting. And, and I can't begin to enumerate this because, number one, the idea that you were taping the president of the United States, yeah. that you were using a position of power and trust. Uh, is is I mean frankly I, I don't know the law that's not my area but I got to imagine that there's got to be something that you did that's not legal about that. Number two, it's unbelievably disloyal. And number three, from the snippets that I've read, it's delusional. She she I mean look the bottom line is by her own admission she tried to run back into the residence to save her own job. Right. Once she got fired, then it became like now she's going to do this whole story about why he's. He's not, you know, he's got problems. He is the, the only one who's got problems and who has an issue is her. Oh, and I'm, I'm glad you said that. I'm aware of her because I, I used to watch The Apprentice, Sean. And on that show, she was on there for so many weeks because she kept lying her face off. Now it was reality TV, and he's had her as part of the, the team for a long time and gave her every opportunity. She has fame. She has fortune. She has notoriety because of Donald Trump. You mentioned the word loyalty. That's one of the most important things to this man. I mean, he's got to be – this has really got to hurt him. Like emotionally, uh, I, I don't know I don't, that it hurts him in the sense that I mean I think that you 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 like I, I think it speaks to him that despite her previous uh, comments and acts and yeah. lack of performance, he he kept he brought he allowed her to come into the White House as a trusted aide. I think that's probably a little bit hurtful, but I don't think that it took a lot to realize that that's who she's always been. I got you. It's Sean Spicer. The name of the book is The Briefing, Politics, The Press, and The President. Last question: Is the tour slowing down? Or are you still like nonstop doing stuff like this? Uh, I'm here in Orlando. I've got we drive to Southern Florida today, okay. uh, later this afternoon. Then I go back up to D.C. I see my wife and kids for the first time in 15 days. <laughs> oh man! Uh, and which I'm I'm not only excited for. I think my wife is ecstatic that I'll be coming home. Uh, but then I'm back on the road. Uh, I've got a couple events in the D.C. area on Monday, and I'm up in Philadelphia and then New York the rest of the week. So in Arizona over the weekend. So I, I this Great. is going to be nonstop for for a few more weeks. But I love doing this. I love the reason I wrote the book was to be able to talk about my experience. Right. not just at the White House, but the RNC. and ever. So I'm having a blast doing it, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and your listeners about you know, what, what was going on and hopefully give them an opportunity to get a front row seat to the last few years of history by reading the book. I hope everybody buys it, buys five copies, and gives it to friends and neighbors. The Briefing, Politics, the Press, and the President. Sean Spicer is the author and the former press secretary. Sean, thanks a million. Thanks, Joe. Look forward to talking to you soon. Always appreciate it. Back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.